here's some of the questions I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about me plus, like where um, do I want to go? Hello there and thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel for another video. Now in this video, I'm going to go for the ultimate DevOps roadmap. How to get started within DevOps, how to get started within the cloud native ecosystem. Now, for those who are new to my channel, my name is Anais, and usually I make videos related to Kubernetes and the cloud native ecosystem. This includes projects within the cloud native ecosystem, technical tutorials, but also some lifestyle and career related videos, such as this one. Now, what are we going to talk about? This is a quick disclaimer. I'm not going to give you the ultimate DevOps roadmap. I'm not going to tell you what kind of technologies you should be learning about in 2022. However, I'm going to tell you the kind of questions that I would ask myself, or I'm actually frequently asking myself to figure out my next career steps, my next career moves. And that includes whether the type of job, the type of position I want to have, or the types of skills that I should be acquiring, or the type of technologies that I should be mastering or related. So why don't I just provide you with the ultimate DevOps roadmap? Why don't I just tell you the kind of technologies that I've learned and that I think you should be learning? There are lots and lots of these kind of videos and other content out there that do exactly that. However, it's kind of like the saying of, <laughs> Teach a, teach a man how to fish instead of giving them fish, right? Now, I'm vegan. I don't give anybody fish. <laughs> Please don't give me any fish. So, <laughs> um, so why am I not telling you what you should be learning? Because you will not acquire the skills to advance your own learning journey if I just give you a roadmap, right? The answer to questions such as, if people ask me, what they should be learning, how to get a job within the DevOps space, how to get started in DevOps, whether they should change career, what they should be studying to get started in DevOps and similar, all these questions, right? The answer to those questions are so individual. They are based on the individual person, on you as a person. What do you want to do? What do you want to do one third of your life? What do you want to do eight hours a day? What excites you? What gives you the feeling of flow? What are you interested in? Those are really, really personal questions, right? So if you ask me how to get started in DevOps or whether you should change from a different technical career or a different career altogether into DevOps, well, I would want to sit down with you and ask you several questions of like, how come you want to change career in the first place? How come you want to get started in DevOps in the first place, right? Now, the answer to those questions, as you didn't, can imagine, are really based on you as a person. Now, I can sit down with everybody. I also don't want to because those are so personal questions, right? So I prefer showing you the kind of questions that I would ask myself to figure out the answer to those questions for myself. So I created this blog here, Getting Started in the Cloud Native Ecosystem. And I'm basically detailing first what I've already just told you of the answer to those questions will depend on what you want to accomplish. Where do you see yourself going as well as what you already know. And then I mentioned two books that helped me throughout my career a lot, a lot, a lot. The first one is so good. They can't ignore you. Why skills trump passion in the quest for work you love. And that's by Cal Newport. Cal Newport is a um, computer science professor, I think. And I read several of his books. He also wrote Deep Work. He writes very well on productivity and your career and how to get started, how to advance yourself and so on. These kind of things, right? Now, it's not like your usual self-help book because it's pretty direct on you shouldn't just follow your passion. You should figure out where you want to build your craftsmanship. And when I was reading that book, there was before I made the decision to change into the DevOps space, actually. And I wrote about that in this here, how do I open this? <laughs> I wrote about this in this article. Let me find it here in this article. Why I don't follow my passion. Now you can read about that if you're curious. And in the meantime, I'm going to continue talking about how to get started in the cloud native ecosystem. So <laughs> 
the next book is, which I'm still reading right now, is Think Big. Take Small Steps and Build the Future You Want by Dr. Grace Lauren. Now, she's a social economist. I think that's how you call it. I'm not 100% sure. At a university in London. And she approaches um, the way of how you should think about yourself and how you want, should build your career from a very scientific way. And let me show you why I love her book. Now, I want to highlight one of the projects that is supporting me, which is Amo. Creating content is extremely time consuming and I want to keep all of my content freely accessible to you here on my YouTube channel, as well as on my blog post. So thank you so much, Amo, for sponsoring this week's video. What is Amo? Amo is bringing developer-driven Kubernetes security today. They are patented technology and tools fit natively within the CI-CD pipeline and existing development tools, assuring DevOps, DevSecOps, and developers that every Kubernetes cluster, container, and microservice is born and remains secure from development to production and from configuration to runtime every time. Sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So make sure to check them out. It would mean a lot to them and to me. And just give them a shout out. <laughs> Uh, they made this video possible, so thank you so much. Uh, let's continue with the content. And um, as you can see, like this is just one of the pages, but what I want to show you is um, she basically talks about if you want to go somewhere, anywhere in your career, you should think about yourself as in what would me plus look like? How would I, my accomplishments, where I am look like in let's say six months. So I'm thinking about myself in six months time. What will happen until then? What will I have accomplished? What things will I have built? What skills will I have acquired? And all those kind of things, right? All these, these kind of questions. And then from then I work backwards of in filling the gap of what has to happen today, what has to happen tomorrow, what has to happen in the next week to accomplish that me plus. And that should be a realistic me plus. Now, why I love this book is because um, she provides these kind of tables. Like she provides these kind of questions. Me plus uh, will be in a similar role, but my responsibilities will have expanded to include if I want to gain more responsibilities at work. Me plus will be an entirely new career and me plus responsibilities will include and then you kind of list those responsibilities of what do you want to do? What will, do you want to build? And you can fill that out. And in a similar way, I tried to structure this blog post. Now, um, <laughs> here's some of the questions I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about me plus, like where am, do I want to go? It is, what do I want to accomplish? What activities are taking up my work hours? If I'm spending eight, nine, 10 hours at my work, what activities do I want to fill my time with? Whom do I know and frequently network with? Whom do I want to interact with on a day-to-day -day basis? There's the saying that we're the average of the five people that we work with or that we surround ourselves with. Who are those average five people? <laughs> or what's the average of that five people? Um, not, yeah, that way around. Um, <laughs> and then I'm continuing to ask questions of why do you want to get started in the cloud native ecosystem in the first place? Why do you want to build a career in DevOps? Maybe it's the money and that's, that's completely okay. You want to get a profitable job and then you can think about it from that perspective of, okay, how do you get that job? And you can work yourself backwards. And so once you read through this blog post and it's linked below, it's linked in the description, you will find several of these questions and also my approach of how I would figure out the answer for myself to these questions. What have I done in the past to answer these questions? I then continue the blog post by talking about what influences your learning journey. There are so many different influencing factors throughout my career. I had individual people, companies, teams, um, the things that I'm reading, the things that I'm coming across, so many different things influence my career. And similarly, you will have different influencing factors and you will have to manage those influencing factors. For instance, for a lot of people, especially while choosing university, choosing where to get started within your career, you will be influenced by your parents, by your family members, and you will have to manage the expectations of those influencers. And that will continue probably throughout your entire career that you will have different people, different factors influencing your decisions. So you have to think about that as well as part of your learning path and manage that. 
and then from there I continue to talk about other factors um, that kind of will influence of how you move forward. So first of all you want to think about um, the type of people who are doing something that you want to be able to do or that come from a similar experience, from a similar path. For instance, if you've not gone to university, if you don't have a traditional career path, you might want to look for other people who don't have a traditional career path and how they approach challenges, but also use their uh, background and their skills to their advantage. And so that's one part. <laughs> and then the other one is what resources do you need to advance? What resources do you need to acquire new skills? In many cases, we will fall by default back on paid resources. What kind of boot camps are out there? What kind of other paid courses are out there? And I'm kind of challenging you in this part to think about, okay, what does this boot camp or what would that paid resource, if you don't have access to it, what would it teach you? How can you teach it yourself through other means, through other resources? A lot of paid courses are actually based on documentation. So if you find a course on Terraform, for instance, the course is likely based on the Terraform documentation itself. Now it's obviously more difficult to go ahead and teach yourself Terraform based on the documentation because you don't quite know how somebody else might think about it, but it will be or it will help you to develop your thinking of it and you will still get the same information just through other means. So those are kind of the two main points that I would think about <laughs> as well. And lastly, I'm talking about, about my own career path this far. You know, I talked about my career change in this video before on my YouTube channel. I can make an updated version if you're interested in that. Um, but then I also talk a little bit about the skills that I acquired in the process of my short career this far. And I kind of break it down into different, uh, like different sections as well of within my first degree, right now I'm doing my second degree, um, then my first contract work, internship, the first developer advocate role, first role in the DevOps space, what are the kind of technologies that I've been learning about. Now that's not to say that you have to know these technologies by heart, you have to learn them by heart, right? Now there are definitely other technologies that I'm not mentioning here that might have been a given for me or that I just forgot to think about and so those are just the main ones that I just remembered in a moment writing it. <laughs> um, so this is not to say that if you want to get started in DevOps, you should learn these tools, but this is kind of what I've been learning. Now, if you get started in DevOps, you're getting started in the cloud native ecosystem, your career path could look completely different. I know people who are cloud engineers and they learn about completely different things to what I'm learning about. And that's, that's okay, that's cool. That makes the space so diverse because everybody has different focus of what they know, what they want to learn about and what they, what skills they acquire and so on. So just take this as with a grain of salt, take this as like me just sharing my own experience with you. <laughs> so I hope it's useful. Now this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching this far. I hope it was useful. Again, the blog post is linked below, so make sure to check that out. Make sure to let me know in the comments if this was useful. If you have any other questions, make sure to comment those as well or join me in the next Q&A. Also, I have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free online uh, resources from across the space, from amazing people from across the DevOps space right to your inbox. So if you want to learn about what other people work on and work with, then make sure to subscribe to my newsletter where I share all the amazing cool resources that I come across. I hope to see you in one of my upcoming videos. Have a lovely day or evening or morning, wherever you are. Bye bye. <laughs>